one of the distinctive features of the forest tradition is that there is no one single forest meditation method. You read the teachings of the different Ajans and you find that they have many different approaches. Some focus on the breath, some focus on Bhutto, some on the contemplation of the body. But there are some features that they all have in common. You have to remember that each of the monks was out in the forest alone, often for months at a time. When he came up with a problem, he had to figure a way around it. If he couldn't, it was a long way to go see the teacher. And as John Mun and all the Ajahns say, the teacher can't be there holding your hand all the time. You have to learn how to depend on yourself. So how do you depend on yourself? A couple of principles that Ajahn Fung used often in his teaching. He made a distinction between basic principles and the details. The basic principles are things you have to keep in mind, so you don't go astray. But then the details are going to depend on each individual. I noticed that as he was teaching people, in the beginning it was like herding cats. With one person you'd have to direct them in one direction, another person in another direction. It's as if the spot of just right was in the middle, and some people were too far to the right, some people were too far to the left, too forward, too backward. You bring, have to bring them into that spot of just right. But then when everyone reaches the spot where you can sit there where the breath stops, awareness fills the body. From that point on, everybody's practice seemed to follow the same steps. But in working on how to get people to go from too far left or too far right into the middle, he said, if you look at the seven steps that John Lee taught in keeping the breath in mind, these are in the, the end of the book, Awareness Itself. Whatever the problem is, it's usually because one of those steps is missing. Focusing on the breath, starting out with long, deep in and out breaths, working with the word Bhutto, and dropping the Bhutto to analyze the breath, work with the breath of the body, find a spot in the body to be centered. learning how to combine all the different breath energies in the body so they're unified. These are the basic principles. As for the details, there are two words that Ajahn Fung used in his meditation instructions more than any others. One was to be observant. In other words, you try something out and then you would look for the results. And being observant means you have to be observant all around. The results may seem good in, in one way, but you have to watch out for areas in which they may not be so good, and then adjust things accordingly. This is a basic principle of cause and effect. This is how John Munn stayed sane out in the forest. He tended to have many visions. Davis would come to him and teach him that he should do walking meditation like this or sitting meditation like that. And as he told Ajahn Fung, if you believe everything you see in your visions, you're going to go crazy. So his way of filtering things out was to take what, whatever Dharma lesson there might be in the vision 
check it against what he knew of the Dharma already. And if I pass that first test, then put it into practice and see what actually happened. And withhold judgment until you've seen the results. That's being observant. Then other times, however, you run into problems. You don't have any visions, you don't have any guidance. And that's what he said, you have to use your ingenuity. As John Ford talked about how when he was first meditating, John Lee would talk about how to bring the mind down. So John Ford brought it down, 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 down. It seemed like it had no energy at all. He said, this must not, not be right. So then he brought it up, 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 up. Now it was too far. So how about the middle? And bring it right into the middle of the point of just right. That's where you could settle in. And the mind was clear, energetic. Right for gaining insights. So when you meet with a problem and you can't find any instructions as to what's a good way to deal with it, well, use your own ingenuity. The fact that you've thought this up on your own doesn't mean it's not dharma. Not, not all dharma has to be in the texts. If something that works, gives good results, gives rise to more insight, gives rise to an ability to let go of things that are burdening the mind. Then it counts as Dharma. But if you're not really sure of the results, this is where it's good to think of a principle that Ajahn Mahabhava talked about one time. There's a Dharma talk when he talks about his reaction to Ajahn Man's death. He had depended so many times on Ajahn Man, even when Ajahn Man would not always answer his questions. But at crucial times when the issues were large, John Mun would give him guidance that he could depend on. Now when John Mun was gone, what should he do? He felt like he said, a person whose doctor has died, the doctor he's depended on for so many years to look after his illnesses, now the doctor is gone. He'd have to be a wild animal, he said, out in the forest with no one to care for his illnesses. Then he stopped to think, what were the instructions he would get from a John Mutt when he had a big problem? And one of the most important ones was, if something comes up in the mind and you're not sure about how you're not sure about how trustworthy they may be, just stay with your sense of awareness and watch it pass while the awareness stays. And that way it will cause no danger. So you can see there's no one way of solving all the problems of the mind. You get the basic principles, but then you have to figure out how the principles work for you. There are times in the Buddha in the Buddhist teachings, where he teaches breath meditation, he starts out just with breath meditation. Other times, before he teaches breath meditation, he teaches lots of other, lots of other themes to contemplate. Because some people find it hard to just settle down with the breath immediately. So you can contemplate making the mind like earth. Just trying to be as non-reactive as you can to whatever comes out. Not to stay just there with non-reactivity, but then to use that as a basis for looking at the breath, adjusting the breath, to figure out what's working what's not. If issues of the day are filling your mind when you sit down to meditate, you might try the, the Brahma Baharas. 
on yourself that you don't want to have any bad karma with anybody. To the very least, wish them goodwill. And develop some equanimity around the issues of the day so you can settle down with the breath. Or you can contemplate the inconstancy of the distractions that would pull you away from the breath. You can contemplate the fact that they're not under your control. That they're not really yours. You don't have to identify with them. Sometimes it's useful to think things through a little bit to the point where you're ready to settle down. Then you can be with the breath. There's lots of different ways of getting the mind into that spot of just right. So you have to be observant, and you have to be strategic. You're going for good results. And you're coming from ignorance. So how do you move from ignorance to good results? You experiment. Try things out. If one of the Dharma teachings doesn't work for you, you might try another one. Or you might ask yourself, do I really understand these teachings? What if I turned that understanding around? Looked at it from a different angle. Used it as a different kind of tool. It's through thinking strategically of these ways that the Forest of John's gained awakening. And what works for them should work for us. Now, it's not so much a particular method, but a strategic approach that we're here to explore. We want to learn about our minds. In some ways, our minds are all alike. In other ways, they're personal. Individual. So it's going to take some exploration to figure out where does your mind like a John Lee's mind. And where is it somewhat different? Where is it like a John Mahabu's mind, a John Munn's mind? Where is it different? It's in thinking strategically in this way, being observant, using your ingenuity, that you can learn how to depend on yourself. And you would always have to be waiting for an Ajahn to come and answer your questions. You'll be able to learn what's a good question, what's a question that can be put aside. judge when you've found a good answer. You have to remember that insight is a value judgment. We're not here simply to accept what the Buddha has to say about the world. We're just here to see what's worth doing, what's not worth doing. What, when you do it, will lead to long-term harm and suffering? What, when you do it, will lead to long-term well-being and happiness? Notice that those questions are strategic. And you ask them to get some guidance from others, but you also ask them of yourself. To give yourself guidance in how to approach your meditation. To remind yourself of what you're looking for. And where to look for it. In other words, you look for it in your actions. And you judge those actions by the results. 